Welcome, guys. Today, we have a very exciting episode for you. Today, we have Gino Palumbo with us. So to give you a little bit of a background on Gino, he started as a young entrepreneur selling shoes, phone accessories, trading stocks, and flipping a number of other little things. Uh, during his sophomore year in college, he got inspired to pursue real estate after watching YouTube videos of Max Maxwell and immediately acting on them. After closing his first deal, he went all into real estate, consistently investing in learning and marketing his brand with the guidance of various courses and mentorships. Now he runs Ferocity Assets, which is on pace to make $1.5 million for this year while he has just graduated college in recent months. Guys, today we have an awesome show. Can you just tell me how awesome that interview was? Oh my goodness. What an amazing show. It was great. What, what are the yeah. one or two things that we could share with the audience? Like there are so many that were yeah. great. What I really love about what Gino shared was the importance of having a mentor and not recreating the wheel. He mentions that so many times and he was just able to to pull from these these people that was able to teach him and and see it as an investment in being close to them. Um, I thought that was a major takeaway for me. What about you, Oscar? What, what do you think? Man, I always looking at the how and at the end of the day, it's really the massive action that he did. If you just listen mm -hmm. to the story, it's just amazing. Like he didn't even know really what's going to happen two steps ahead. He's just looking at one step ahead at every single step, he did it well, right? He took yeah. action every single step. Whenever there is an issue, a problem, he was always able to look up to someone or find the resources to fix that or to move on to the next step. And I think that's the biggest takeaway for me is that mm -hmm. a lot of people um, kind of in this mental state, it's like, I need to know the whole thing A to Z. Well, you don't, Yeah, you know, not for your first couple deals. You know, and yeah. that's what happened to him. And and I, I I can't wait for people to hear that in details because that should open people's eye like right away, especially yeah, people sure. who hasn't done their first or two deals or hasn't got a, that consistency, right? In 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 getting mm -hmm. that deals um, every single month. Mm -hmm. I couldn't yeah. agree more. And so what are, what are we waiting for? It's 22 year old, years old. Here, we're going to get to the interview right now. Next, meet Gino Palumba. Let's go, guys. And welcome, everybody, to another special episode of The Intentional Investors. My name is Melissa Asbury. We have Kess on Purpose, Oscar the Closer, and we have a special guest with us today, Gino Palumba. Gino. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate the invite. Um, I'm glad to be on, share some knowledge, be around you guys. Get that money. Get that <laughs> money. Yes. I think he's already swimming in that money somewhere else outside the U.S., right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right now I'm in Rome. i um, taking a little three-month trip. I started a couple weeks ago um, in all uh -huh. Europe. So that's enjoying amazing. it as I can. That's that's so amazing, wow. man. I'm, I'm actually a little jealous of you. I just came back from Costa Rica, but um, I think where you are at is is a lot more fun and for much get, longer too. <laughs> we need to get you over here. Fly I know. <laughs> I love I mean, that's it. That's amazing. So, the, the, the longest time I've been on vacation and I used to have a restaurant and you know how you know full-time restaurant is and everything, um, I could only get away for a month. That's it. And even with that, mm -hmm. you know, I have to set time you know, and, and it was, when I go back to Indonesia, it's like 12 hour difference, right? So I have to oh, go yeah. at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. looking at the, at my cameras to see my workers yeah. come in and everything. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be yeah, honest I'm, with you, I'm still working too. I'm still grinding. I mean, I'm only working probably two or three hours a day, like consistently, but <laughs> I'm still grinding as much as I can. Let's, I mean, I feel like this is a perfect perfect um way to get into it to let people know who you are who is gino what does gino do what are you actually grinding on so tell us who you are from the very beginning and and kind of guide us to what you were just referring to yeah so my name again is gino palumba i'm 22 um i live in georgia when i'm not traveling obviously right so i started real estate wholesaling when i was 19 
Um, and then since then, I've been growing it as much as I can. So I started my sophomore year of college and then worked my way now. So yeah, real estate wholesaling, I started at 19, been grinding since through college and just graduated in August. And now uh, actually at the same time correlation, we've got the business pretty systemized to where now I'm not in the day to day anymore. I'm working more on just the vision of the business. Awesome. Amazing. That's amazing. Can you tell us like you got started at 19? What was that first deal like? Like what what your appetite to keep going to think I can really make a great career out of it? Yeah, so I guess it started out. So I found wholesale in September of 2018. Um, I found it in terms of just I watched a YouTube video. I saw it come up on my uh, and refer or what's recommend recommended page, right? So I saw it come up and I discovered it, it was from <laughs> Max Maxwell. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I'm uh-huh. looking more into this. And so I spent like a week or two just grind, listening to videos. And then on one of Max's videos was talking about bandit signs. You know, it's a good way to get your first yeah. deal, you know, putting out the sun, we buy houses signs. And so mm-hmm. immediately I bought, you know, I had some money saved up. And so I bought, you know, just like a hundred of them for like 200 bucks. And then um, <laughs> I started putting them out. I mean, immediately. So let's say it was end of September is when I saw the video. I would say probably within two weeks I had them and I was putting them out probably. No, I was probably putting them out like the first week in October now that I'm thinking about it. So I was putting these signs out um, and to go into your question, that's where I got my first deal with Bandit Signs. Someone called me up. Actually, like the first couple of days I put them out and this guy literally calls me up and he's like, hey, do you buy houses? Obviously, it's like, yes. Yeah. Um, and it was some guy I could tell he knew what he was talking about. And I was like, he's like, yeah. well, I have a house here in East Cobb, which Keston would know it's one of the hottest areas and mm-hmm. um, in our t- in Georgia. And he's like, um, I'm looking to sell it. What is your discount you put on each, on every deal? Like he asked me that. And so mm-hmm. I've watched enough videos at that time where I was the 70% minus repairs. So I was scared as crap again. So first call taken in and I was like, Oh, he had 30%. <laughs> so I didn't say anything mm-hmm. past repairs. I just said 30%. He said, okay, well come look at it. Um, Cause he said his house is worth probably 300 and 310 and 30% would be around 200,000. So I was like, I went out there knowing that, hey, I got a 30% discount, but then I still didn't think I had a deal because I was like, oh, shoot, when I hung up, I forgot to tell them we also have to discount repairs and we got to put my fee in it. <laughs> and so I was scared. Like, I was like, this is, you know, and I didn't know at that time, too, I was new to the area. So I didn't even know any such thing of what area is good or not. So for me, mm-hmm. I was going out here and I knew that I had to negotiate walking in there because I knew how to get off repairs and my fee. Mm-hmm. So um, long story short, I went there on the appointment and uh, he wouldn't go below 200000 and, and to my knowledge, it wasn't a deal. Like I thought it had to be at like 150, you know, 40 K mm-hmm. repairs, 10 K my fee. So right. I, I just abandoned it. So I couldn't do it. Right. So fast forward, like two or three weeks, probably like the middle to end of, uh, probably the end, like the 20th, I'm thinking the exact times, probably like the 20th, 22nd. I started looking at trying to find buyers, not for that deal, just in general. I was like, okay, let me start mm-hmm. building a buyers list too. So I get some list source, some buyers, cash buyers, LLCs, looked them up to Georgia's secretary of state, found the agent. Anyway, Skip Trace called up like my first three and they're like, you have any deals? You have any deals? And I was like, well, I do have this potential deal in you know, this area. I told the three people that they literally, all three of them said, I want to meet you there tomorrow. I was like, wow. shoot. Awesome. And because they're like, what <laughs> price? And I told them 215. <laughs> and I was like, shoot. Cause I thought it was a no deal. I just said, here's the numbers on it. I told them immediately mm-hmm. when I told them where it was, they all said, okay, when can we come see it? And one of the guys was just adamant about coming tomorrow. And I was like, Oh crap. And so, yeah, I don't have no contract. I didn't do it the right way. Well, I technically didn't tell the buyers either. I had it on a contract. I said <laughs> I had this deal pending. Um, and so, uh, I frantically called that seller that night. It was like a Friday night. I called him at like five o'clock and I was like, Hey, I got to get out there tomorrow at 10. Cause I knew my, the buyer wanted to walk through it at like 11. Mm-hmm. So went out there, got it under contract. The guy maybe put a two wow. week closing. He maybe put two week closing. Uh, I think it was like two days due diligence. He only, I only put down like a $500 earnest money. So like he wasn't that strict on that, but he wanted a two week close. And um, actually I, I take that back. He wanted a seven day close. He was mm-hmm. getting very aggressive. He wanted a seven wow. day. Cause I remember I was scared because um like, I didn't know if the attorneys could do it in that time and yeah. uh, chalker chalker and chalker cast then. And so mm-hmm. again, I get it. Let's fast forward. I get it under contract. The buyer walks in. I, I'm scared. I'm telling him, don't talk to the seller. Don't talk to the seller. Like I didn't know, you know how it really works. It's set expectation. I was like, snare. He's like, don't worry. He was a really good buyer and a really good seller technically too. Um, 
And so he, he was like real nice. I'm not going to say anything. Anyway, he comes back to us. And I remember when he came back after looking, we're both, we're all there together at the property. And so he like, we get John Paul, who was my, not that time wasn't my partner yet, but was a buddy helping me out, like a distracted seller. The buyer mm-hmm. comes to me and told me, <laughs> he told me 210. And I was like, yes, we'll take it. I was like, we'll take it. No doubt. Like we made our 10 grand because we had under contract at 200. Wow. Wow. So no, it's a long story, but that's how we got our first deal. It actually was able to close in five days. We got it rushed. Um, it nice. was like, there's no mortgage or payoff needed from the seller. So, I mean, it was mm. quick. Um, and it closed that's in awesome. five days. We got paid like the first week of November. And yeah, so that's how the first You're deal went out. Yeah. Wow. There is Good so, so much to unpack in that. Oh yeah, my goodness. There is so much to unpack in that. Starting from the beginning where you went to YouTube University you, you and you took action, right? Like you heard what Max Maxwell said. You were looking at, you said a couple of weeks worth of YouTube videos and you heard about these bandit signs. You wasn't afraid to take your own money and invest it into these bandit signs and you took action, you laid it out. That's the first thing I want people to get here because a lot of people that listen to our podcast, they're still nine to fivers or, you know, they're trying to get in. Like, tell me about real estate there in that beginning, maybe procrastination stage. And so that's the first thing I want you guys to hear in this is that he took action. Then Mm -hmm. somebody called and he didn't know what to do, but he, he still continued on. He still continued on the journey. He spoke to the seller. He ended up, I wouldn't say giving up. He, he put it on the back seat. He continued to listen to videos. He started to build a buyer's list. And, you know, to, to the people that don't understand the process, you have a seller, you need a buyer in doing wholesale transactions, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you sell that paper, mm-hmm. the contract, for a profit. And so he was building his buyer's list to be able to sell this paper, not necessarily this one, but other deals that he would potentially get. And then he he made a, a match. He he was like match.com. That's where I met my wife. He was like match.com. <laughs> right? Where he 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 seen this this seller, this buyer, and he made he made it work. And he made ten thousand dollars from that incredible action, not knowing the full picture. A lot of people don't get started because I, I don't know what to do next. What do I do? You know, they they want to figure everything out before taking action, and you just jumped in. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, I, appreciate it. I think a big yeah. thing in there too is what I tell a lot of beginners. Sorry to interrupt you, Melissa, but I tell a lot of beginners is that, you know, it's another lesson in there is you don't use that 70% minus ARV, or ARV times 70% mm. minus repairs minus your fee. So I, I had a very good investor friend is well known in the community that he was actually my coach and he's very well known um, and in Atlanta's community. And he uh, told me, he's like, no, Gino, it's not a deal. It's 70% minus this and this. So that's why also I put it on the back burner. I was like, this guy's telling me it's not a deal. And this guy's done wholesale and he's big. He's yeah. on thousand plus. I was like, let me put this away. So what I learned real quick is like, forget that formula, you know, start mm-hmm. looking at, know what your cash buyers will be at, what they're selling for as is. And that's going to really, you know, one, I would have, I would never got my first deal there if I didn't, Yeah. you know, shoot it to oh. some other buyers that might be not following that rule per se. Mm-hmm. I think we all assume what our buyers are going to be at until you're actually building the relationship with that buyer and you need to know where they're going to be. The The question I was going to ask, you know, is on that bandit sign, I'm just so curious. Did you put like your personal cell phone number or did you actually have like a tracker system? Were you that no, elevated? Uh, at no, I wasn't. I had my personal number. I had to. Have <laughs> wow. I, remember I did. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, I had my personal number. I got calls. Yeah. put the hundred out and I got calls by every single code, code enforcement. But the funny thing is, is like, I just, so I took them down all of my, my number. Like as soon as I realized that's not what you're supposed to do. So maybe I only put 60 or 70 out with that number with my number. And then I ordered like 300 more with all the tracking numbers. So then I just kept getting calls again, still from them, but at least this time, not my personal. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, this, this reminds me of the innocence of a baby, right? Like a baby will do anything because they don't know the, the repercussions. There's no, like, 
they just don't know. And so they just take incredible action until us as parents start instilling fear into them as to, no, don't do that. You're going to fall. No, don't do that. That's too hot. And when you don't know and you just take action, it's like that innocence is so beautiful at times, you know? Um, man, I, I, I love that first deal, man. Love it. Yeah, yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so I know that we're thinking this because we're all entrepreneurial. It's in each one of our spirit. But where did this come from in you? Like what... Where did this drive come from? At the age of 19, most people are out in college, partying, having fun. Clearly, you weren't doing that. You were trying to make a way. Tell us about that journey. Yeah, I would say it started when I was probably 12 years old. Um, I started buying, uh, at the same time, I was buying shoes like Kobe's and LeBron's, like special edition ones, just because I wanted them, but I immediately <laughs> saw I could sell them. <laughs> so I was like sixth grade doing it. Um, not making, I mean, I was making like, I bought the shoes. I was making, you know, fifty, sixty dollars probably every every holiday or two. So I was making like I saw that's enough money to last a twelve year old pretty good time, you know, pretty long so time. You, so you was buying and selling shoes in, in high school? No, when I was in middle school, twelve years old. In middle school. Okay. Wow. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I was in middle I was twelve, so sixth grade. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so wow. I was doing that and then I quickly grew into selling like Apple or like Apple chargers. Um, like obviously not real ones, but I was buying the chargers in China, selling them. <laughs> and then um, that grew to like selling some cooler stuff to headphones. But to answer your question, where did it all start from? My dad is an entrepreneur, but he never really pressed it on me. Um, I guess I would say that's how I even discovered entrepreneurship was through him. But he never really sit down and said, you had to do this, this and this, or you have to be an entrepreneur. So I feel like like subconsciously, I'm thinking of like he I wouldn't say he's the reason I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, but now if I really look deeper back into it, since I grew up knowing that he didn't, you know, subconsciously not or not knowing that he was technically an entrepreneur until I knew what that term was. He just came, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't travel. He was home every day, you know, working from his computer. So I think that's what maybe I didn't know. But now looking back, that that's probably what, you know, made me want to do, you know, my own business at the time before I even knew entrepreneurship was a word, my own stuff, because I like the flexibility. And I saw that firsthand, right. Of, um, yeah. That he never had to report to anyone or he never had to go to work. Um, but he, you know, obviously he did still, but it was that I think now looking back on it, I didn't realize it at the time, but I think now that's what really got me in, you know, into the uh, doing my own thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Like, are you super close to your dad? Do you guys have a really great relationship? Yeah, like, we have a good relationship. Yeah, awesome. he's all, he's all happy. He's he's an old Italian dad, so my girlfriend's <laughs> saying too. But so he's not showing emotions as much. But no, he uh -huh. uh, he definitely is very uh, you know proud, and so is my mom and all that. But uh, again, they never pushed me to do anything in terms of like, hey, you have to do your own stuff. You can't work here. I just saw that, and I was like, I I, I just want that freedom. I want to do my own thing. And not report to anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. I would I would say to all of our listeners, I like to pull the message in the stories here. That's kind of what I love to do. And so I would say here, like, guys, your kids are looking at you. And it doesn't really matter what you tell them. It's what they see. Yeah. And I was explaining to someone recently, maybe this week, where I have this ability to build stuff. I'm not a builder, like carpenter or anything like that. Um, and it wasn't until this year when I moved to Georgia that I realized where this all came from. It all came from me just being around my dad. My dad, he he's a fix-it guy. And so when the shower heads or, or whatever, the shower body goes out, I know how to fix that. How come? I used to see my dad fixing shower heads back home. Um, I know how to change brakes and, and, and shocks and all these things in cars. How? I used to watch my dad do it. He never said, this is how you do it. Never once. But I used to be around him doing it. And so it wasn't until I'm out here, I realized like, holy crap, I know how to do this because I used to be around my dad just observing. And never once had he yeah. said, this is how you hold a saw. 
this is how you make a desk. You know what I mean? And so your story resonates with me um, so deeply because this goes so much further as to, um, I remember my wife asking me one time, like, how do, like, old money, right? Like, all these people grow up around old money and what makes them continue? It's almost like they it's their mentality. They almost have no choice because that's what they grew up around. You know, it's like kids growing up in Afghanistan, they know how to use guns because that's what they're around. You know what I mean? And so it's like, it's, it's just what it is. So guys, like what you do around your kids, they're going to follow that. And, and it shows right here in Gino's story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like Oscar could speak to that because what you're doing with your daughter right now is amazing she's not even driving mm-hmm. a car and she's doing deals is she locked up like two now i mean so she's watching you and she's taking action yeah yeah i mean it's, it's what um the same thing with gino right she she, she watches me do things and you know I, I happen to be you know she's she's happened to be 12 13 14 when she's looking at me doing real estate going and i even take her last summer to all the showings and all the um, um, seller's appointment, things like that. And so when she turned 13, she said, oh, I want to start calling sellers. And, you know, so I start teaching her, you know, how to call sellers, how to do the four pillars and whatnot. And so now, you know, I, I task her to do FISBO, you know, basically just call FISBO. And she locked up her deal. Yeah. Uh, one of her first, first deal uh, last week, we, we sent a contract. We get under contract and, and and we might find a buyer already. And so we can do double close. And, you know, she's, she has another contract that she's working on. So, you know, and, and that's the thing too, right? Uh, do you know, like the, what resonates is um, the the how, you know, can be taught, right? But still, you know, the way you do your passion and you're taking action is the, the key, right? Mm-hmm. Because like you, when you did it, you know, it's the same thing when, when Audrey does it, she doesn't know the whole picture. So you just like, okay, well, just call sellers when the sellers start talking and everything. And and if you have trouble negotiating, you call me. And I'll call I'll call and I'll I'll help navigate that. But it's the action. Right? Yeah. It's the action. The how is going to come along the way. And and as you said, you 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 found a mentor, you also found someone who with an expertise, and and those who don't fall along the way, right? But that that action, you know, result in something, right? So and I, I love that when I, I start teaching someone with blank slate, right? That's the best because yeah. now they don't have a preconceptions like, well, should I do this? Should I do that? They would just, okay, mm-hmm. well, I'll do that. And then if there's some a question, um, I'll ask you and I'll give her a, just a short answer of, so she knows how to move forward again. One step, one step, one step, and then reach the final line, right? So, so, so now she's been through, in the entire transaction from A to Z, literally, you know, she's even the one that revised my contract, you know, the, the wholesale contract. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so yeah. she knows. You know, the only thing I did was just send the DocuSign using my account. That's it. And now we're following <laughs> up with the sellers. You know, so. That's Pretty crazy. excited. And how, how crazy is that? Like, she's doing that while she's in, she's in middle school right now, exactly. right, Oscar? She, and, she just and, started freshman year in uh, in in high in school. High school, mm-hmm. and and this Gino, year. Gino is, and we haven't said how much he's on track to make this year yet, but Gino started taking action while in college, right? Like you were still trying to get a degree while you were making money, exactly. right? Talk mm-hmm. talk to us about that, and and I I think now is a good time to to, to say what you're on track to making, which is 1.5 million this year, right? You're 22 years old and you're on track to making this while in college. Tell us more about why even finish college? Like you're, you're on this (laughs) grind, you're making more money than nine to fivers do. um, And you're in college. Why even finish that? Like what made you continue on? Yeah, that's a good question. So the big key, or there's two things there. There's there's two answers to that question. Well, one is I didn't have to pay any for any of my education. Luckily, my parents, I was lucky enough where they covered um, the education and they covered where I stayed. So I didn't live far from where mm. my home was, but they still did that. So if I was going in debt, 
it might be a whole nother thing. Or even if I was paying out, there might have been a whole nother situation. But I didn't have to do that. So I was lucky enough. My parents were paying for it. They wanted me to do it. They were really passionate for me to do it. But at the same time, I would have, if I was probably going to debt, I would have probably not done it. Now, the second thing was, mm-hmm. was my grandpa, right when I started this business, end of 2018, um, it was, again, like November, my first deal. Well, my grandpa fast forward six months later, five months later, he passed away. And mm-hmm. I remember the first thing, and I actually was talking to sellers. I, so he got sick on like in January. I went to visit him. Um, he was fine. You know, he recovered from that. Um, but I remember during that stay, I was like talking to sellers. I was telling them what I'm doing. And I remember the last time I, I really like I saw him face to face and talked to him. He's like my dad told him that cause as soon as I got my first deal, my school, I had my finals December 6th. Let's say I got my first deal November 2nd or 3rd. So I was fresh off my first deal ending the semester, sophomore year. So I was ready to I was telling my dad, I'm not going back in the spring. I'm ready to go like <laughs> full t- full flat ahead right so then my dad tells my grandpa that you know a couple weeks later when we see him and my grandpa's like oh no you got to finish I want you to finish and so you know fast forward two months later he passes so I was like all right I'm going now I'm definitely going to uh finish this up and uh, I was like at that point I was halfway through college and I felt like I want I owed it to my parents, but most importantly, my grandpa. So that was a big thing. I just, I took it in and I uh, just kept going and it forced me, I think it was a blessing too, because it forced me to get people to replace my, my roles. Right. So I, I was wow. able, I knew to, I need to hire someone to do cold calling. You know, at that time I hired a lead manager quickly after because I knew if I wanted to still scale and I want to do school or, you know, I'm going to do school is I'm going to need people to replace me. So it forced me to get those people. So now the time that I graduated, which was literally August um, last last month, now that I have the business systemized, I guess it just worked that way. Now that I look at it, you know, just worked in my yeah. favor. That is amazing. Awesome. Yeah, because I now think about it really. I, to be honest, and now thinking about it, now this is the most I thought about it. I probably would have been trying to do every role for another eight, twelve months, you know, because that's yeah. what. Hmm. Why wouldn't I, you know? And so if I had the time, now it forced me to get those people. For sure. Wow. It sounds like a huge blessing. So I just want to point that out. Thank you so much for being vulnerable to share that about your grandfather because that's a big deal. Sometimes we don't take time to really sit back and reflect the why and figure out why we're doing things. But it sounds like you're a very, very loyal person, um, which is you so well in your business to your buyers and your your sellers. You're going to pull through for them. So I just want to point that out. Yep, yeah. Thank you. And absolutely. I also want to point out because I could hear... I can hear when people think, right? I have that spidey senses. So so I can hear people saying like, well, he had a head start, right? People always look for the reason to justify why they can't do what you did, right? And so let's think about this. Yes, he did have um, the ability to have college paid for him, but how many people squander that, right? Like, do you take care of uh, anything that's given to you for free? Or do you take care of something that you paid your own money to, to, to use? For example, do you take care of a rental car? No, you don't. You treat it like trash. You go in every hole. It doesn't matter to you. Now, if you bought a, a Lexus, a Mercedes, a BMW, or something like that, you would go around that hole versus a rental car. And so he didn't squander the opportunity that he was given Um, and going to college, and he still worked as if he paid for it and and hustled his own business. So I want you guys to get that because I know how people think and they try to justify the reasons why they can't take action. So I want to point that out um, to to you procrastinators out there. (laughs) That's awesome. So tell us, I'm just curious, what's what's your degree going to be in? What are you studying? So, so yeah, my degree. So I'm like I said, I graduated last August, um, yeah. a month ago. So my degree is in finance. Wow, yeah, I love so it. Oh. Totally hand in hand. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No. So so let's talk about how that degree ties into to your business. So you're on track to making 1.5 this year. Um, how do you feel that your degree and what you've learned um, along your life, school? everything how does that tie into to the success that you guys are, are currently having um well i would say 
if we're just taking my finance degree, it's definitely helped some when I'm running these reports. But funny enough, I actually took myself out of the finance role right when I graduated. I put Chandler into it. <laughs> so yeah. to give you an exact <laughs> answer, like, I mean, of course, it helped knowing numbers from my high school career. Like, I'm I, I'm really good with numbers. Um, and so that helps me with, the, you know, predicting KPIs. But reality is you don't have to be a finance major to be doing what we're doing because I've used very minimal of what I've been taught. And yeah. when I start growing more, like when I start hitting some big multifamily or maybe some huge developments, I'm sure I'm going to see a lot more about, you know, IRR, you know, all these little, you know, formulas yeah. that we learned about. Right. So right now, though, to, to do what we're doing, you know, the 1.5, maybe even a little bit more this year. I would, I would not credit it much to the finance degree other than that just <laughs> education maybe over the long term because, like, I mean, you use the stuff, you know, past, you know, I would say up to high school, you l use all that stuff, you know, daily, right? So just talking to people or numbers, you know, things like so that. So you're saying we just need algebra. Yeah, you just need algebra. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Preschool. Yeah, pre no school geometry. Stuff. Yeah. No geometry. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you overthink things though in this business. And so I've heard that the simple, I mean, just the simplest people can accomplish the biggest thing. So I want to just take a step back real quick because from that first deal of bandit signs to going up to 1.5 million, people may be thinking, what did that business structure look like? What did, like, how long did it take you to go from that first deal now projecting 1.5? I know it's been a few years, but when did you really start to take off on that journey? Um, so that was end of 2018, first deal, full 2019. Um, in that year, we hired a lean manager. I brought on a partner, too, during that. He was actually a good friend, um, cool. that which didn't end up working out. Down the, fast forward to, like, 2020, end of 2020. But anyway, 2019, I brought him in, um, had a lean manager, cold callers for us. Um, and that was about it for all of 2020. Or all of 2019, excuse me. And we did 220, did like 23 deals in okay. that year. Um, and then nice. when it came to when it came to 2020, um, we started really now looking back on it, really scaled up. We got um we had to hire at least a couple texters, three cold callers. I mean, which Brian and Chandler end of the year. Um, dispo girl coming in that was a texter, we turned her to dispo. So we probably grew from three, four three or four people 2019 to like 10, 11 in 2020, mm -hmm. where we did like 700,000. So mm -hmm. that's where it really came in that switch. And on top of that switch, also we started doing in 2020 more hotels or some quick, you know, flips. Yeah. So that private money is what really sparked us in 2020, being able to access that and take down these home run deals and, you know, get the high, you know, five figure spread, six figure spread. Awesome. So do you have typically three or four marketing channels going at a time? I'm hearing cold calling, texting. Yeah. So in 2020, all we had was two uh, cold call text. Um, and this year we opened up TV and now we have or right now as we speak, technically we have like five marketing sources as awesome. we speak. Yeah. Thanks. So, wow. So important. Yeah. Now we scaled up to where we can, you know, we systemize texting, systemize cold calling. Now TV was pretty systemized. We just pay managers so we can, you know, keep adding more and more as uh -huh. long as we see a return. Do you wow. ever see yourself like going into like the club seats and like putting somebody into your position so that way you can then monitor everything from the outside? Or do you truly love, I mean, I just know you said you're only working two to three hours a day, but. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I love working and I mean, I'll always be doing something. So like right now in the business, it's weird because the last two or three weeks, I'm kind of in that seat now. I'm the, it's, I'm the visionary of the company. So. I'm not in any department heads. I'm in very few like responsibilities. Um, one responsibility is like getting more private money, which I can do by just phone calls. You know, like I enjoy talking to people and like awesome. only other thing too, in the whole business I do is like, I'm going to split half and half. I'm training a guy and we're doing it together. He's probably almost better than me at doing this MAO. So like giving our acquisition guys the, the max offers. But other than that, yeah, I'm pretty, I have no other day-to-day -day task. You know, this happened all in the last month. So now I'm kind of dealing with, I'm getting, hiring more mentors and more coaches and spending more money on that. So eventually I'm actually going to be the goal in the next couple of years is being the owner's box. Like now I'm not even in touch with the company at all. Like I might check one report every week, mm -hmm. but I'm not even responsible for giving vision for the company. Right. So that's hopefully in the next couple of years, but uh, at the same time, I'm enjoying it now. So can't complain. Man, that's, that's, that's so amazing, dude, Be because 
here here's the thing for for many people and especially people that's listening to this podcast you quit your job or you want to quit your job and you go into business and you become the business you become the i could do it by myself i don't need anybody else i don't want to split the profits if i hire this person to do this i got to pay them so i'm not going to do that and so you're basically saying i hired people to replace myself now you had a reason for it as you shared earlier because you had to study and all of that and so you i wouldn't say forcefully um kind of replaced yourself but you hired people you didn't become the the end all be all in your business and you were able to pull yourself out and now you are in rome <laughs> having this conversation with us spending 2 hours a day making millions for your business man and, and that's a lesson to me because um and and I didn't share any of this at all before Gino and I are cool right like we've gone out to to have lunch and and all this type of stuff we've hung out a couple of times here in Atlanta and Gino and Chandler who is his integrator would always tell me dude you need to hire a lead manager what are you doing hire a lead manager and and they would tell me over and over and I this stubborn guy who did not understand and is now getting to this place of guys we need a lead manager like we need two lead managers right because now i'm just working and i'm working and i'm working and i can't scale me when i got to do different things and you did that so perfectly and gracefully and i'm sure you had your trials and everything like that and training but 2 years later this was 2020 we're in 2021 1 year later you're in Rome being able to run the business remotely. Like if that isn't a lesson for for anyone, I feel like we could end the podcast right now. I'm going to go hire more lead managers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, I think it's important because like everyone's mindset like I mean obviously we even me I love working, but at the same time you got to find the point where you're not working in the business, you're working on it because now my time if I'm able to now one, sp spend more time with mentors to watch more educational videos that gives our company maybe a 20 X return, a 10 X return in terms of mm -hmm. my time, you know, versus me just sitting and um, working as a lead manager example. It's a good example. If I'm calling these leads, well, I should be focused on the highest thing. Now in your sense, you might think, well, I should be closing deals. So that's also the highest thing. Maybe I should be an acquisition manager, get a lean manager. But then when you're an acquisition manager, you want to be the, let me just be the manager of the sales department. Well, as soon as you get there, let me just be the vision because now all my time could be spent on not in the business. I could look above and say, well, Chandler, that's actually now, I think not the way to do it. Now that I'm not in that role, maybe you should, you know, this should be go this way. We should mm -hmm. switch it this way. And then now I can spend, like I mentioned twice now, our time more with these mentors that are doing what I want to do, you know, or mm -hmm. in the position, you know, mm -hmm. doing way more than us. And now I can have these calls. And again, that time is worth a hundred times more than what I was doing as a lead manager. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. That's so such good. great. Advice. So I have a question because I know that there's probably people listening out there because they're trying to do this. They're trying to get out of their nine to five and be brave to take that step out into faith. What is like a, a big lesson that you could teach them or us that you've felt during this time? Is there one thing that you've learned through a big challenge? I know you said you had a business partner and then you separated. Yeah. Um, what would that be that you could share? Um. So regarding the business partner, like don't be quick to obviously form, um, you know, partnerships. And I think Pace talks about it, you know, Jamil, they all talk about, you know, hey, you don't want to be. Even Steve Trang, you know, he says I'm against partnerships, even though he has like three or four partnerships. But the <laughs> thing like with that was like it was just a, a lot of people have been um, there's going to be people listening that are in this this role and it's going to make them feel uncomfortable. Like I just brought in my original partner or my only partner I've had just because we were friends. And like I just wanted to do it with them together just because we were like friends. We've done stuff in the past. Like I want you to be a part of this. But the problem mm -hmm. is, is like he was pretty much the same person as me. And so there's nothing that's adding value to the business if we're both the same person and no one can take care of, you know, the integrator role, which is, you know, the smaller yeah. things or the marketing, like we're both like talking on the phones and we're not good at doing TC work and it's not helping the business. So I was just 
premature, you know, fast to make that that jump. And I was actually very blessed because I had mentors that I paid to show me that, look, that's not going to work out now in the future. And we already knew that, but they gave me the idea of how, you know, I can present this to this partner that, hey, look, fast forward now. We've done the business a year and a half, almost two years. And look, I think our best way is to part ways because, you know, I'm not seeing the value in uh, what you're doing. And it's no, you know, hard feelings, but I think we should, you know, part our ways. So the big thing, I guess, like answer your question, Melissa, is just to be careful and just make sure your partner that um, you guys have already a system or maybe something in place to know what each role you guys are going to have and make sure they don't step on each other. So make sure, and that's mm-hmm. why it's important, you know, that book Rocket Fuel, which I know we've all heard about, where the visionary yeah. integrator, how you can find that. It's very important to find if you're the visionary, which a lot of us are as entrepreneurs, to find that person that can do that day-to-day operation stuff. If you're not, if you're partnering with another visionary, there's a high chance it's not going to work out, especially long-term. It might at first feel mm-hmm. good, like, hey, we're doing stuff. But yeah. once you, and that's what I learned, I'm never going to partner with a visionary again, unless there's already an operator in place or an yeah. integrator. That's exactly. so rich. Because there's everybody that's listening to this right now, that either you're a part of a marriage, a relationship, a team, opposites attract, right? You need mm-hmm. to have your your yang to make it an entire unit or to make it work to the best of its abilities. Cause we're not all great at one thing. We need to make sure that we're closing our gaps with others. That's what I think us three provide to one another. But Keston, I know you have a, or Oscar, I'm sorry. I think you have a couple of thoughts that you'd like to share on that. I mean, I'm just trying to absorb it all in, you know, I mean, starting with, I mean, just, just a simple, like how, how would you qualify your partner? Right. I know you said integrator, but I mean, how do you get to that? Not quick to partner, but yet you want to find a partner, right? So how how do you qualify them? Well, the simple step I would do if I was to do it again is one, you know, there's the easy divisionary integrator test online. Not that that's the mm-hmm. end all be all, right? See what they're okay. at, right? They're a yeah. So you're talking about the rocket fuel um, test. Assessment. Yeah, the mm-hmm. assessment. Okay, we'll put that in the, um, sh- in the, in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. So if they're, I mean, that's just an easy one, right? If they're a hundred percent visionary and I'm a hundred percent visionary and I know that I know it's not going to work out now. What also you might want to do is like what Pace did, you know, start dating a little bit. If you feel like, Hey, mm-hmm. this person could be a good, you know, person to compliment me, right? They're the yang, mm-hmm. my yang. Let me start dating with the person. Let's not go into an agreement. Maybe let's work on a profit share. We'll just profit share everything um, and mm-hmm. see how it works for six months. I would say minimum six months. And you, by then you'll see the true colors of the person. You know, I've had partners too that I partner on deals with where I I bought in, you know, just like quick flips. And I see this person and the way they act in month three where they're being more stingy in month one and they're not really being the person I thought they were. So like, I knew like, Hey, if we ever try to do a big partnership, I don't want to be a part of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe date a little bit and just work on that profit split and then, Mm -hmm. you know, go from there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's really, really solid advice. Um, something that you mentioned time and time and time again in this conversation that I want you to talk about, um, how important are mentors and and that type of um, role models to you? Because you, you've said that so many times. Matter of fact, you've even said Mm-hmm. When you get to the owner's box or when you go up more, you get to spend more time with your mentors. So obviously, this is something that you value. Talk to me. Um, talk to us a little bit about why. Like, why is this so important? Well, I think the big thing it comes from is like, in order to grow, you know, we need coaches. We need someone to not just inspire us, but to show us that it's possible, at least for me. Right. So when I'm talking about coaches, like I know I'm offered this one guy recently for paying him like a thousand dollars an hour. And this guy's doing 10 mil. I won't say what it's doing 10 million a year in real estate, wholesaling and investing. And what I see on it is like, Hey, everything is a return on investment. Right? So if mm-hmm. I give this guy $2,000 a month, right? Meet him twice a month for an hour a day or hour a session, you know, I have two sessions a month. Mm-hmm. All I need is literally him to give me, one tip to make me an extra deal, just one tip, because our average deal size is 26000 right now. I need one tip, and I'm going to make a 13x return on my money. One mm. tip in those two full two or the two hour sessions, one hour each time, two hours set, uh, two hours total. All I need is one tip. And I know this guy's doing 10 million. So you're telling me this guy, I'm only doing, 
you know, we'll hit 1.5. I'm only doing like, I'm doing almost 10 times less than him. Right. I'm working at like a 10%. You're telling me that this guy in two hours can't give me it. T- and I know he can. So this is why I'm making the investment, right? Yeah. He can't yeah. give me that return on investment. And that's, what's going to keep. And I a hundred percent will say that's the reason where we grew so quick. Or I like to think grew pretty fast is because I p- kept putting money back into mentors to, to realize how I can more efficiently do text message or how I can close deals better, right? Through Steve Trang joining his sales program. All that stuff right there. I mean, I get I can count on my hands like at least a couple hundred thousand I know of that it's helped us with, you know. So I think that's the big thing there. Mm. And how much money you think you spent in mentorship so far? I actually just looked at it the other day. Like I calculated total, it's been like <laughs> seventy thousand in the last three wow. years. Wow. Yeah, so really the last two years, but so it's so I went I mean that's what I wanna highlight, Melissa. Um seventy thousand investment and this year you're on track to make one point five plus and you've made high numbers even last year and the year that you started. And so grand total, I mean Guys, I think I think this is easy math, right? <laughs> I think this is super easy math and and it highlights the importance of you got to be around people and sometimes you need to pay for that because I come from a society um in my culture where you don't pay to be like you just don't pay a lot of money for things. Like, oh, you could find that on YouTube, you know, and and that's another great question. Why not just look at it on YouTube? That's how you've got your first deal. Right. Like that's how you you were able to get your first deal from YouTube. Why spend the money versus looking at it on YouTube? T- talk to our listeners. About I would say that. the big thing with that is like you could find a lot of the stuff on YouTube. But when you start mm-hmm. going from the scale of, you know, 700 to 1.5 to 10 million is our goal in the next five years. That stuff becomes very either it's not on YouTube or it comes very hard to find. And the fact that if I can not spend if I'm going to try to find the information, this guy's going to tell me one, I don't think I can find all of it on YouTube because it's a lot of his personal experiences. Again, I'm talking about the the mentor that I'm looking to invest in. Um, Mm -hmm. It's all his personal experiences and what he's learned, but let's say you could, let's say that information was on YouTube. I guarantee you it would take me hundreds of hours to find it and then hundreds of hours to watch it when I can just talk to Mm -hmm. him about it and he goes direct to the point or maybe not. Right. Or, and he tells me right there. So those hours I saved, maybe it's not hundreds of hours to watching it, but if those hours I save finding and watching it, I can speed that up because I know my time is valuable and I can mm-hmm. pay and get it all right there in front of me. And not like he's going to give me everything to the playbook, but I can get that information like this. Why would I waste, you know, or not waste, but why would I spend, you know, a hundred plus hours looking for it and searching for it when I could just get it directly from the source? Yeah. I love Your that. Your time is valuable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to look everything as a return on investment. So my time, there's some, investment right it's time you got to monetize it you got to measure it by you know monetize or a monetary value so you got to spend 100 hours to find something at this point like mm-hmm. you just want to you're going to lose money by looking for it yeah 100 percent. so would you go ahead go ahead melissa no we're probably going to ask the same question so talking about mentors and mentorships who are your biggest role models in this business today? Um, I would say my biggest role models is probably Steve Trang, Pace, of course, Big Pace, Morby. Um, yeah. And then I would say a couple of the guys that are the bigger ones that not a lot of people know about. One guy's name is uh, Darren Dammy. He does, um, he runs our TV ads and his company, they're doing multiple times down a million a month. And they're in like Vegas and, or not Vegas, excuse me, they're in Phoenix and uh, LA. Um, but these guys are like, these are the guys and like another guy named Ren Bartlett and Eric Brewer. These guys have literally, I've reached out to them and they've sat on the computer with me for an hour, two hours, telling me about their business and answering all my questions. Like these are true mentors, right? And this is what Impays has done it. Steve has done it. You know, they've all sit down and and they've all helped me or answered my questions if I need. We all know that Pace is a big, you know, mentor, go giver. I mean, he's doing thousands of hours. So, I mean, that's an obvious mm-hmm. one. But like Steve, you know, all these guys have brought in, you know, their time to help, you know, help me get to where I want to be. And so yeah. that's why I really look up to him, you know, as mentors. Mm-hmm. I hear Steve Frank's name a lot. What is the most valuable thing that he's given to you? Like, what did he teach you? Or coach you? Steve? Steve Trang. Oh, Steve Trang. Yeah, Trang. Steve. Uh, the biggest thing is... um. 
I would say this, like the broad is the sales training for sure. I mean, I took mm -hmm. it when in early 2020, we invested, it was my first big investment in a mastermind. Um, I think it was like at that time, like 12 K for the year. Um, and now I think he's, which he should have, he raised it up to 18 because it's just crazy. You get one thing again, back to that one thing you already make, you know, if your average deal size is even 20 K, you already made your money uh -huh. back, which I'm sure you can make five mm -hmm. or six times back. But anyway, so yeah, Steve, I think his big thing is sales. So that's what he taught me. And For I sure. never had a sales process at that time. Um, and so it really opened us up and like, Hey, this is how, what we're supposed to do on the call, how we're supposed to do it versus just us calling and just talking and trying to get the price and this and that, you know, actually yeah. understanding there's a process and objections to get over and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You probably don't want to give us the formula to that, right? Yeah, exactly. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what just happened is part of C Steve's training. That's the negative reverse um, that I just did where you talk and you say, you probably don't want it. That's like one of the major things that he teaches. Exactly. So that's why I said that to him. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, man. This has been great. If there's any other one thing that you want to share, like to just take home to our listeners, Keep in mind, these are nine to fivers, folks that are trying to get into real estate. What would be your one tip or one advice to them to help grow? And get I would started? say the biggest thing I tell people, and especially people still working now, is like, don't stop just because you haven't got your first deal or you're not seeing success right now. The only time you will fail, I know it's cliche, is if you quit. Like, I know people personally that worked a nine to five and they, for nine months, it took them to get their first deal. And now they're doing 500,000 a month consistently took them nine months. So imagine, like, I can only imagine if it took me nine months, how much I would have been like, how many times I would have thought of quitting. But the fact that mm -hmm. if you can get through that, you can stay consistent, consistently market, everything has got to be consistency. If you can do this consistently, you will get deal. That's such good advice because it does come down to persistency. I can tell you from my own business, whenever I stop marketing, I feel it in 60 to 90 days, hands down. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you guys can say the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, I think it's, Absolutely. I think the big key there is like, everyone wants to, everyone wants the easy way. Like it just, like I got lucky. Mine was in two months. My deal was two months. Like I got mm. the deal and I knew I was lucky. Right. So I, I took that as, Hey, look, I got my deal. I know this guy took nine months and he's making fun. I can, let me stay, let me stay on it. Now, if I didn't get it there, it's easy for people to think. And I know people, I know tens of people that reach out to me. Hey, I just started. I'm, I quit six months ago because I'm, you know, I couldn't get a deal. Um, and I just, I didn't have time. I, I just, you know, it's easy to quit, but I'm telling you, if you stay consistent, consistently market, I mean, that's how you get your deals. You got to consistently market. If you keep doing that, you will get a deal, you know, just mm -hmm. a matter of time. That's amazing advice. So guys, I think this has been a great interview. Gino, people are going to want to follow you and find out how they can get in touch with you. Can you share exactly where people can reach out to you? Yeah. So even on these, on my label here, um, that's my Instagram, Gino underscore R-E-I-A-T-L. Um, you can reach out to me. I'm pr that's where I'm most active on. Um, mm -hmm. You can also, my Facebook's just Gino Palumbo, which would be on the left side over here. But again, I'm most active. It's hard for me. And Keston's got my other phone number now too. So, cause I got the trap phone. No, um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. That would be the easiest and fastest way to get a hold of me. Which okay, is so Gino. Instagram, just to make sure, because we have a lot of folks that listen because they're driving okay, and they're not yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. At Gino, G I N O underscore R E I underscore A T L. Again, that's at G I N O underscore R E I underscore ATL. And then your name is Gino Palumba, G I N O P A L O M B A. Yes, ma'am. There we go. That's a wrap. <laughs> Guys, do we have any final words? Well, I, I want to thank Gino, man. Um, such a go giver for being a, a good friend because I'll be able to call Gino and, and his integrated Chandler. And they really, really helped me um, get started. Um, well, I, I had started, but they helped me get to another level, right? Mm. Um, when I acquired all of my rental properties and stuff, Gino and they helped me do that. Um, so when I went from four to 11 or whatever, like they helped me, they were so um, pivotal 
Um, they they also do have a, a cold calling business that we didn't plug in in this, but um and and I just send everybody um to their way, and so I really really appreciate admire um Gino and 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 his company and all they do. Really true go giver as all is always willing to help. So guys, reach out to Gino if you need help. Reach out to Gino if you need cold callers. Reach out to Gino. Like he's super, super inspirational. Um, making this happen while in college, just graduated college. So um, yo, bro, thank you. Thank you. Thank no, you. Thanks for having me on again and thanks for the plug. But yeah, yeah thanks, Gino. Keep keep going, guys. And again, appreciate for having me on. Reach out to me on Instagram. I'll be happy to respond for sure. Thank you. Awesome. And so now the portion of our show, which is going to be super exciting. This is when Gino gets deep in his relationship talk. Gino, are you ready for this? I'm ready for that relationship talk. <laughs> so, so Gino. We might need to bring Melanie over here for this one. <laughs> yeah, bring her in. She want to come in? Come over She's here, Melanie. Come here. See, we're gonna she have to want to come in. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, Melanie. Oh, she's so that's, that's a real entrepreneur right there. Dino's just a front. <laughs> I love it. You're the face. So right, we're we're asking Gino how this all works, right? You guys are, are are really pressing on, working hard in this in this business, and how is it working with someone who is so addicted to the success? and making this business into what it is. What, what is that like? Honestly, he's given us permission to talk about this. Um, well, first, I was, the first thing that came to mind is working with your, not spouse, but your, you know, significant Not yet, not spouse. Um, so that's a little bit tricky sometimes, but working with him, it's very motivating and everyone on our team is the same. Like Chandler, our integrator is the same exact way. So it's like, you always like, push yourself to do better. You know, you, there's like a high expectation from both of them, even though he's mm -hmm. my boyfriend, you know, there's still that high expectation. So I guess, I guess I'd say that. You're kissing up now. <laughs> and, and to say it. Hold, hold on. I think we need to ask Gino to go to the bathroom and, and really get the truth. Because, <laughs> we need because, to so, yeah. so here's the truth, right? I, my wife is also our transaction coordinator in oh, our business. Nice. Right. And so I know what it's like when I want something done and it's not done. And and there's just we need to have catch up. So we started having one on one meetings before the meetings just so that we're on the same page. What was that like? Because I know it wasn't just like, oh, smooth. And I look up to him. And yes, that happens. But um, what actually happens when things like that come up? So I just started doing this like three months ago. So I graduated in May and we've had this, this trip planned for a long time. So I know that I didn't want to like get a nine to five, you know, in Georgia because I yeah. you know, to do this. So mm. he gave me this opportunity and in the beginning learning, I think both of us were very stubborn and we both have very low patience, mm -hmm. but that was a little tricky in the beginning. And, you know, the way we, the way we talk to each other is a lot different. You know, if I had a real boss and he said, why isn't this done? I'd probably cry. But if he says it to me, I'm like, because I haven't done it yet. That's why, like, you know, it's just a little different. Um, yeah. But now that he's more out of the business, I would say it's mm. better. Um, so now that, you know, Chandler is more into it, him and I talk to each other most. And if there's like a bigger problem, then we'll talk to Gino. But if I, I don't go to Gino for anything now. You know, and when we're that. sitting across the table working from each other. So if I do have a question, I'll just ask him. But usually I would just ask Chandler or another member on our team. Wow, that's, that's awesome. amazing. I've, yeah. I've found that that really keeps things very um, polished, even in, in our team. Like we're we're bringing on new people and, and I've found having her ask somebody else it's freed us up to enjoy our marriage a lot. And it also requires a certain level of growth from me where she may be going through something on the personal side and it's time to work. And it's, it's balancing the emotions of being a husband when 
the emotions of being a boss, well, not boss, but needing something done all at the same time, because she is a business partner of mine. And so it's like, like that has been my challenge or, or force to grow. Gino, how has, what has that done for you in being able to balance the both with both lover and um, person that works in the business? Um, I mean, what it does for me, I feel like the the best thing, like you said there, is like you don't want to make it too connected to the two. You kind of want to make those two separate roles, right? Your girlfriend and business, you know, TC. So like now that I don't, and I never really did, I made sure of that in the beginning because I had mentors that told me that, is I just have her report to Chandler, the integrator. And so that way I don't have to, be involved now at the same time i am the boss that or the guy that not the boss but the leader i try to perfect things and so it's hard for the beginning you know and that's why my role now is i'm getting used to it is like look i just trust chandler now as the integrator right? he looks over the department heads he's got to be responsible mm -hmm. and accountable he is accountable so if they don't do something right if they're not doing it right then it's it's on him right and not to put the blame on someone but at least i know that hey it's not my job to try to intersect the, this problem or this thing, right? Let them come to me after they, when they need it and not just use me as like a, like not have, not let me overuse my stay or overdo my, you know, overstay. Right. Set my boundaries, yeah. right? Overstep my boundaries. Let me, yeah. let them ask me instead of me going into it, you know, and try to figure it out. That's so smart. That. That's so smart. That's wisdom right there because you want to have that separation and that buffer, so to speak. And I think too, so I work with my husband as well. So we flip homes and he's like our little carpenter and just a big carpenter. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's very talented, but I have to make sure that like emotions exit any conversation, right? Like it's very direct, restricted to the point where we respect each other. And that's huge. Like if you don't have respect for the other person, the person feels that like they just want to be heard and respected. Yeah. It's a big deal. You got to cut it off though at some point. There's got well, that's another thing. I talked to Stephanie Betters. I don't know if yeah, she's the one. She her. created Left Main for the Salesforce. She's a pretty good. Uh, okay. She's on Stevie's podcast too. She's big. I let. She's really good to talk to. But go ahead. Anyways, I just had a call with her one day. Gino set me up a call with her, and we talked. And she said that she works with her husband as well. And she's like, "You just need to like look at each other's and at each other in the eyes and be like, okay, we're done talking work. Like now we're done. Now we're going to talk about our personal life. Let's go have fun, and we're not we're not going to talk about work at all." And if we do have to talk about work, we can talk tomorrow or make a time for it. You know, you have to like really separate so through. It's so true. Mm, and it's yeah. even more hard when you see like your phone dinging and you see things come in. You're like, oh, I know. Yeah. Right. You have the other hard thing for me is like my phone never stops dinging. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she and I wish I that. could shut it off because, you know, in the past I worked, you know, throughout college, I was a manny and I was, you know, working in the restaurant business. So once I left, I was done. I didn't have to worry about anything, you know, you leave mm -hmm. and now sellers will call me and, uh, and especially with yeah. the time change now, 5 p.m., you know, Eastern is 11 p.m. here. Like I'm trying to go to wow. bed, or, like get ready for bed <laughs> or eating dinner yeah. or whatever. So. It seems like you guys she are doing sounds a great so job. much like jazz. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are doing a great job, though. So I think if anybody can take one thing out of this segment and you do decide to work with your other half, girlfriend, fiance, spouse, spouse, whatever it is, make sure that you have that that buffer. So that way the person isn't directing right directly to the other half. Um, I think that's really, really smart. And that's probably going to hedge a lot of yeah. maybe future conflicts, you know? Yeah, sure. just, just don't do it with your side piece. Side piece <laughs> is no good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, man, thank you so much. And 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 thank something you. that you kind of indirectly said without saying it, which goes back to your personality, you found a mentor so that you guys could talk to um, in even in this how to work together, which goes to your personality, bro. You put so much value on finding people that you could pull from so you don't have to go through the entire experience alone. So thank you for that again. No, no worries. Yeah, don't. Don't recreate the wheel. I always tell Chandler to don't reinvent, you know, anything. Like if there's someone's already gone through it, they're already doing yeah. it. Well, you know, get it from them, you know? Yeah. I love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for um for joining us. Um, I totally forgot your girlfriend's Melanie. name. Melanie. 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 There you go. Sorry. I was I didn't... squatting. My legs are like falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. Have fun today. 
Have Thanks fun with Lauren. Giving me a five minutes of fame. Five minutes of fame. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> All right, guys, and that's our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, peace. Peace. Hey guys, it's Melissa here from the Intentional Investor Show. If you like what you hear and if you want to dig deeper into your own real estate journey, hit the subscribe button below. We would love for you to join us. Thank you so much. Until next time.